from around the globe. It's theCUBE, with digital coverage of AWS reInvent Executive Summit 2020. Sponsored by Accenture and AWS. Hello and welcome back to theCUBE's coverage of AWS reInvent 2020. This is special programming for the Accenture Executive Summit where all the thought leaders are going to extract a signal from them to share with you their perspective of this year's reInvent conference as it respects the customer's digital transformation. Brian Bohan is the director and head of Accenture, AWS Business Group at Amazon Web Services. Brian, great to see you. And Chris Wegman <laughs> is the uh, Accenture uh, Amazon Business Group technology lead at Accenture. Um, guys, this is about technology vision, this, this conversation. Um, Chris, I want to start with you because you're Andy Jackson's keynote, you heard about the strategy of digital transformation, how you got to lean into it, you got to have the guts to go for it, and you got to decompose, he went everywhere. So <laughs> what, what did you hear? What, what was striking about the keynote? Because he covered a lot of, of topics. Yeah, it, it, you know, it was epic uh, as always from Andy. A uh, lot of topics, a lot to cover in the three hours. Uh, there was a couple things that stood out for me. First of all, hybrid. Uh, the concept, the new concept of hybrid and how Andy talked about it, you know, uh, bringing the compute and the power to all parts of the of an enterprise, uh, whether it be at the edge or, or in the, the big public cloud, uh, whether it be in an outpost or wherever it might be, right? With containerization now, uh, you know, being able to do uh, Amazon containerization in my data center I mean, that, that's, that's awesome. I think that's going to make a big difference, all of it being underneath the Amazon uh, console and billing and things like that, which is great. Uh, I'll also say the, the chips, right? I, I know compute is always something that, you know, we always kind of take for granted, but I think again this year, uh, Amazon and Andy really focused on what they're doing with the chips and, and compute. And the compute is still at the heart of everything in cloud. And, that continued advancement is is making an impact and will make a continue to make a big impact. Yeah, I would agree. I think one of the things that, that really, I mean, the container thing was, I think really kind of a nuanced point. I mean, you got Deepak yeah. Singh on the opening day with Andy Jassy and he's, he runs a container group over there. A you know, small little team, he's on front, and front stage. That really is the key to the hybrid. And I think this showcases this new layer and taking advantage of the Graviton 2 chipset, which I thought was huge. Brian, this is really a key part of the platform change, not change, but the continuation of mm -hmm. AWS. Higher level yep. servers, building blocks that provide more capabilities, heavy lifting as they say, but the new services that are coming on top really speaks to hybrid and speaks to the edge. It does. Yeah, and it, you know, I think like Andy talks about and we talk about, it, you know, we really want to provide choice to our customers uh, first and foremost. And you can see that in the array of services we have, we can see it in the, the hybrid options that Chris talked about, being able to run your containers through ECS or EKS anywhere. I just gives the customer's choice. And one of the things that I'm excited about as you talk about going up the stack and on the edge are things, well, certainly Outpost, um, right? So now Outpost was launched uh, last year, but then with the new form factors, uh, and then you look at services like Panorama, right? Being able to take computer vision and embed machine learning and computer vision and do that as a managed capability at the edge um, for customers. And, and so we see this across a number of industries. And, and so what we're really thinking about is customers no longer have to make trade-offs and, and have to think about those, those choices that they can really deploy uh, natively in the cloud and then they can take those capabilities train those models and then deploy them where they need to, whether that's on premises or, or at the edge, you know, whether it be in a factory, a retail environment, when we start, I think we're really well positioned when, um, you know, hopefully next year we start seeing the travel industry rebound um, and the, the need, you know, more than ever really to, uh, to kind of rethink about how we kind of monitor and make those environments safe having this kind of capability at the edge is really going to help our customers as, as we, we come out of this year and, and yeah. hopefully rebound next year. You know, Chris, I want to go back to you for a second. It's hard to, hard to pick your favorite innovation from the keynote because, you know, just reminded me there, Brian just reminded me of some of the things I forgot happened. It was like a you know, buffet of, of innovation. Some keynotes have one or two, there was like 20. You got the industrial piece that was huge. The computer vision, machine learning, that's just a game changer. The connect thing came out of nowhere in my opinion. I mean, it's a call center technology. It's as boring as hell. What are you going to do with that? <laughs> Turns out it's a game changer. It's not about the calls with the contact and that's just intermediating um, in the stack as well. So again, a feature that looks old 
is actually new and relevant. What's your what was your favorite um, innovation announcement? Uh, it, it's it, it's it's hard to say. I will say my personal favorite was the the Mac OS. I, I just I think that is a phenomenal um, uh, just addition, right? And the the fact that AWS has has worked with Apple to integrate the Nitro chip into into uh, you know the iMac and and offer that out. Um, you know, a lot of people are doing development. Uh, on for iOS and that stuff, and that that's just gonna be a huge benefit uh, for the development teams. But you know, I will say I'll come back to Connect. You you mentioned it, um, you know, but you're right. It, it was a it's a boring area, but it's an area that we have seen huge success with since since Connect was launched and the additional features that Amazon continues to bring. You know, um, obviously with with the pandemic and all that, you know, customer engagement through the phone uh, through Omnichannel has just been critical for companies, right? And to be able to have those agents at home, working from home versus being in the office, it was a huge, huge advantage for, for several customers that are using Connect. You know, we, we did some great stuff with some different customers, but the continued technology, like you said, the, the, you know, the call translation and during a call to be able to pop up those, uh, you know, keywords and have a, have a supervisor listen is awesome. And a lot of that was, some of that was already being done, but we were yeah. stitching multiple services together. Now that's right out of the box. Um, yeah. And that simplification is only going to make that that go faster and make us to be able to innovate faster for that piece of the business. It's interesting, you know, not to get all nerdy and, and, and business school like, but you got systems of record, systems of engagement. If you look at the call center and the connect thing, what got my attention was not only the model of disintermediating that part of the engagement on the stack, but what actually cloud does to something that's a feature or something that could be an element like say call center, the old days of you know, calling the 800 number, getting some support. You got infra chip, you have machine learning, you actually have stuff in the, in the stack that actually makes that different now. So you, you know, the thing that impressed me was, Andy was saying, you could have machine learning detect pauses, voice inflections. So now you have technology making that more relevant and better and different. So a lot going on. This is just one example of many things that are happening from a disruption innovation standpoint. What do you guys What do you guys think about that? And is that am yeah, I getting it right? And can you share other? No, examples? I think I, I think I think you are right. And I think you know, it, what's implied there and what you're saying, and even in the you know the Mac OS example, is the ability. It, we're talking about features, right? Which by themselves, you're saying, well, wow, what's what's so unique about that? But because it's on AWS, and now because whether you're a developer working on, you know, with, with Mac OS, and you have access to the 175 plus services that you can then weave into your new applications. Talk about the Connect scenario. Now we're embedding that kind of inference and machine learning to do what you say. But then your data lake is also most likely running in AWS, right? And then the other channels, whether they be mobile channels or web channels or in-store physical channels, that data can be captured and that same machine learning can be applied there to get that full picture across the spectrum, right? So that's the, that's the power of bringing it together on AWS, the access to all those different capabilities and services, and then also the where the data is and, yeah. and pulling all that together that for that end-to-end -end view. Can you guys give some examples of work you've done together? I know there's stuff we've reported on um, in the last session we talked about some of the Connect stuff, but that kind of encapsulates where this where this is all going with respect to the tech. Yeah, I, I think one of them, you know, it was called out in Doug's partner summit was, you know, is our uh, SAP Data Lake Accelerator. Right, almost every enterprise has SAP, right? And SAP, getting data out of SAP, has you know always been a challenge, right? Um, whether it be through you know data warehouses and and AWS, or sorry, SAP BW. You know what we've focused on is is getting that data when you're on have SAP on AWS, getting that data into the data lake, right? Getting it into into a model that you can pull the value out, and the customers can pull the value out. Use those AI models. Um, so that was one thing we worked on in the last 12 months. We're super excited about it. We're seeing great success with customers. Um, you know, a lot of customers had ideas. They want to do this. They had different models. What we've done is, is made it very uh, simplified uh, framework that allows customers to do it very quickly, get the data out there and start getting value out of it and iterating on that data. Um, we saw customers were spending way too much time trying to stitch it all together and trying to get it to work technically. Uh, and we've now cut all that out and they can immediately start getting down to, to the data and taking advantage of those, those different um, services that are out there by AWS. Brian, you want to weigh in on things you see as relevant um, builds that you guys done together that kind of tease out the future and connect the dots to what's coming? 
Yeah, I, you know, I, I'm going to use a, a customer example. Uh, we worked with, um, and it just, just came out with, with Unilever around their blue air connected smart air purifier. And what I think is interesting about that, I think it touches on some of the themes we're talking about as well as some of the themes we talked about in the last session, which is we started that program before the pandemic. Um, and, but, you know, Unilever recognized that they needed to differentiate their product in the marketplace, move to more of a services oriented business, which we're seeing as a trend. We, uh, we enabled this capability. So now it's a smart um, air purifier that can be you know, remote managed. And now when the pandemic hit, they are in a really good position, obviously with a very relevant product and capability um, to be used. And so that data then, as we're talking about, is going to reside on the cloud. And so the learning that can now happen about usage and about you know, filter changes, et cetera, can find its way back into future iterations of that of that product. And I think that's that's keeping with you know what Chris is talking about, where even with these systems of record like an SAP, how do we bring those in and then start learning from that data so that we can get better on our future iterations? Hey Chris, on the last segment we did on the business mission um, session, Andy Tay from your team uh, talked about partnerships within Accenture and working with other folks. I want to take that now on the technical side because one of the things that we heard from um, Doug's um, keynote and the, during the partner day was integrations and data were two big themes. When you're in the cloud, technically, the integrations are different. You're going to get unique things in the public cloud that you're just not going to get on premise, access to other cloud native technologies and companies. How is that, how do you see the partnering of Accenture with uh, people within your ecosystem and how the data and the integration play together? What's your vision? Yeah, I think there's two parts of it. You know, one there's from a commercial standpoint, right? So marketplace, you know, you, you heard Dave talk about that in the, in the partner summit, right? That marketplace is now bringing together this ecosystem uh, in a very easy way to consume by the customers uh, and by the users and bringing multiple partners together. And we're working with our ecosystem to put more products out in the marketplace that are integrated together uh, already. Um, you know, I think one from a technical perspective though, you know, if you look at Salesforce, you know, we I talked a little earlier about Connect. Another good example, technically underneath the covers, how we've integrated Connect and Salesforce, some of it being pre-built by AWS and Salesforce, other things that we've added on top of it, um, I think are good examples. And I think as these ecosystems, these ISVs put their products out there and start exposing more and more APIs uh, on the Amazon platform, make opening it up, having those, those pre-built network connections there between you know, the different VPCs of the different areas within within the customer's network. Um, and having that having that all opened up and connected and having all that networking done underneath the covers, you know, it's one thing to call the APIs, it's one thing to have access to those. And that's been a big focus of a lot of, you know, ISVs and, and customers to build those APIs and, and expose them. But having that network infrastructure underneath and, and being able to stay within the cloud, within AWS to make those connections, to pass that data, we always talk about scale, right? It's one thing if I just need to pass like a, you know, a simple user ID back and forth, right? That's that's fine. We're not talking massive data sets, whether it be seismic data or whatever it be, passing those those large those large data sets between customers across the, the Amazon network is gonna is gonna open up the world. Yeah, I see huge possibilities there and love to keep on this story. I think it's going to be important and something to keep track of. I'm sure you guys will be on top of it. You know, one of the things I want to um, dig into with you guys now is Andy had kind of this philosophical thing on his keynote talked about societal change and how tough mm -hmm. the pandemic is. Everything's on full display. Um, and it, this kind of brings out kind of like where we are and the truth. If you look at the truth, it's a virtual event. I mean, it's a, a website and you got some sessions out there. We're doing remote best we can. Um, and you got software and you got technology and you know, the concept of a mechanism, it's software, it does something, it does a purpose. Accenture, you guys have a concept called living systems where growth strategy powered by technology. How do you take the concept of a, of a living organism or a system and replace the mechanism staleness of computing and software? And this is kind of an interesting because we're on the cusp of, uh, of a major inflection point post COVID. Forget the digital transformation being slow. That's yes, that's happening. There's other things going on in society. What do you guys think about this living systems concept? Yeah, so I, you know, I'll, I'll start, but you know, I think the living system concept, um, you know, it started out very much thinking about how do you rapidly change a system, right? And and because of cloud, because of, of DevOps, because of you know all these software technologies and processes that we've created. 
you know, that's where it started, it, making it much easier, making it much faster, being able to change rapidly. But you're right. I think as you now bring in more technologies, the AI technology, self-healing technologies, again, you heard Andy in, in his keynote talk about, you know, the, the systems and services they're building to detect problems and, 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 and give, uh, resolve those problems, right? Obviously automation's a, hit, a big part of that. From a living systems, you know, being able to bring that all together and to be able to react in real time to either what a customer, you know, asks, um, you know, either through the AI models that have been generated and turning those AI models around much faster um, and being able to get all the information that came, came in in the last 20 minutes, right? You know, society's moving fast and changing fast. And, you know, even in one part of the world, if um, something, you know, in 10 minutes can change and being able to have systems that react to that, learn from that and be able to, to you know, pass that on to the next country, especially in this world of COVID and, you know, things changing very quickly, quickly and, and, and um, diagnosis and, and uh, medical response, all that so quickly to be able to react to that and have systems pass that information, learn from that information is, is going to be critical. That's awesome. Brian, one of the things that comes up every year is, oh, the cloud's scalable. This year, I think, you know, we've we've talked on theCUBE before, uh, years ago, certainly with Accenture and Amazon, I think it was like three or four years ago. You know, the cloud's horizontally scalable, but vertically specialized at the application layer. But if you look at the data lake stuff that you guys have been doing, where you have machine learning, the data's horizontally scalable, and then you got the specialization in the app, changes the, changes the whole vertical thing. Like, you don't need to have a whole vertical solution or do you? So how has this year's um, cloud news impacted vertical industries? Because it used to be, oh, oil and gas, financial services. They got a team yeah. for that. We got a stack for that. Not anymore. Is it going away? What's changing? Well, I, you know, I, it's, a, it's a really good question. And, and I don't think, I think what we're seeing, and, and I was just on a call this morning talking about banking and capital markets. And, and I do think the, you know, the, the challenges are still pretty sector specific. Um, but what we do see is the the kind of commonality. When we start looking at the, and we talked about this, the industry solutions that we're building as a partnership, most of them follow the pattern of ingesting data, analyzing that data, and then being able to uh, provide insights and then actions, right? So if you think about creating that, yeah, that kind of common chassis of that ingest to the data lake and then the machine learning, and you talk about, you know, the, the announcements around SageMaker and being able to, to, to manage these models, what changes then really are the very specific industries algorithms that you're 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 writing right within that framework and so we're doing a lot and connect is a good example of this too where you look at it yeah you know, customer service is a horizontal capability that we're building out but then when you snap it into insurance or retail banking or utilities there are nuances then that we then extend and build so that we meet the unique needs of those those industries and that's usually around those those models yeah and i think this year is the first reinvent that i saw real products coming out that actually solved that problem. I mean, it was there last year, SageMaker was kind of moving up the stack, but now you yeah. have apps embedding machine learning directly in and users don't yeah. even know it's in there. I mean, Chris, yeah, this is kind of where it's going, right? I mean, yeah, this is you, the, you saw those in the announcements, right? How many how many announcements where machine learning is just embedded in? I mean, so, you know, Code Guru, uh, uh, DevOps Guru, the panorama we talked about, it's just, it's just there. Yeah, I mean, having um, that knowledge about the linguistics and the metadata, knowing the, the business logic, those are important specific use cases for the vertical and you can get to it faster. <laughs> Chris, how is yep. this changing on the tech side, your perspective? Yeah, you know, I keep coming back to, you know, AWS and cloud makes it easier, right? None of this stuff, you know, all this stuff can be done uh, and has some of it has been done, but you know, what Amazon continues to do is make it easier to consume by the developer, by the, by the customer and to actually embed it into applications much easier than it would be if I had to go set up the stack and, and build it all and then in, in, and uh, embed it, right? So it's shortcutting that process. And again, as these products continue to mature, right? And some of the stuff is embedded. Um, it makes that process so much faster. Uh, it make, it reduces the, the amount of work required by the developers, uh, the engineers to get there. So I, I'm expecting you're going to see more of this, right? I think you're going to see more and more of these multi-connected services by AWS that has a lot of the AI ML, um, pre-configured data lakes, all that kind of stuff embedded in those services. So you don't have to do it yourself and continue to go up the stack. 
you know, we always talk about Amazon's built for builders, right? But, you know, those builders, you know, um, have been super specialized and we're becoming, you know, as engineers, we're being asked to be bigger and bigger and to be, you know, uh, be able to do more stuff. And I think, you know, these kind of integrated services are going to help us do that. And certainly needed more now when you have hybrid edge that are going to be operating with microservices on the cloud model and with all those advantages that are going to come around the corner for being in the cloud. I mean, there's going to be, I think there's going to be a whole clarity around benefits in the cloud with all these capabilities and benefits. Cloud Guru, I think is my favorite this year because it just points to why that could happen. I mean, that happens mm -hmm. because of the cloud data. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you're on premise, you may not have a little Cloud Guru. You got to get more data. So, but they're all different. Edge certainly will come in too. Uh, your vision on the edge, Chris, how you see that evolving for customers? Because yeah. that could be com complex, new stuff. How's it going to get easier? Yeah, it's super complex now, right? I mean, you got to design for, you know, all the different uh, edge, you know, 5G uh, protocols are out there and, 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 and solutions, right? You know, Amazon's simplifying that. Again, I come back to simplification, right? I can I can build an app that, that works on any 5G network that's been integrated with AWS, right? I don't have to set up all the different uh, layers to get back to my cloud or back to my my bigger data set. And I was kind of choking. I don't even know where to call the cloud anymore. I got big cloud, which is essential, and I go down and then I got a cloud at the edge, right? So what do I call that? Um, it's distributed but, computing. It's a it's a exactly, node. <laughs> exactly. So you know, I, again, I think is is this next generation of technology with the edge comes right, and we put more and more data at the edge. We're asking for more and more compute at the edge, right? Whether it be industrial or, or you know, for personal use or, or consumer use, um, you know, that processing is going to get more and more intense uh, to be able to manage that under a single console, under a single platform and be able to move the code that I develop across that entire platform, whether I have to go all the way down to the, you know, to the very edge uh, at, the, at the 5G level, right? Or all the way back in, into the bigger cloud and have that process in there. Be able to do that seamlessly is, is going to be, yeah. allow the speed of development that's needed. Well, you guys done a great job and, if, and no better time to be a techie or interested in technology or computer science or social science to that matter. This is a really perfect storm, a lot of problems to solve, a lot of things, a lot of change happening, positive change, opportunities, a lot of great stuff. Uh, final question, guys, five years working together now on this partnership with AWS and Accenture. Um, congratulations, you guys are in pole position for the next wave coming. Um, what's exciting you guys, Chris? What's on your mind? Brian, what's what's getting you guys uh, pumped up? Well, I, again, I come back to, you know, Andy mentioned it in his keynote, right? We're seeing customers move now, right? We're seeing, you know, five years ago, we knew customers were going to do this. We built the, the partnership to enable these enterprise customers to make that that journey, right? But now, you know, even more, we're seeing them move at such great speed, right? Which is super excites me, right? Because I can see, you know, being in this for a long time now, I can see the value on the other end. And I really have been wanting to push our customers as fast as they can through the journey. And now they're moving that, they're getting, they're getting the religion, they're getting there. They see they need to do it to change their business. So that's what excites me. It's just the, excites me. It's just the speed at which we're, we're going to see the movement. Yeah, I, I, I'd agree. With, I, yeah, I'd agree with that. I mean, so, you know, obviously getting getting customers to the cloud is super important work and we're obviously doing that and helping accelerate that. It's in, it's what we've been talking about. When we're there, all the possibilities that become available, right? Through the common data capabilities, the access to the 175 some odd AWS services. And I also think, you know, and this is, this is you know, kind of permeated through this week at reInvent, is the opportunity, especially in those industries um, that do have an industrial aspect, a you know, manufacturing aspect or phys a really strong physical aspect of bringing together IT and operational technology and the business with all these capabilities. And I think edge and pushing machine learning down to the edge um, and analytics at the edge is really going to help us do that. And so I'm, I'm super excited by all that possibility because I feel like we're just scratching the surface yeah, there. It's a great time to be building out and you know, this is a time for re, reconstruction, reinvention, big theme. So many storylines in the keynote and the events. It's going to keep us yep. busy here at Silicon Angle and theCUBE for the next year. Gentlemen, <laughs> thank you for coming on. I really appreciate it. Thanks. Thank, thank you. you for having us. All right, great yeah, conversation. Absolutely. You know, getting technical, we could have gone another 30 minutes. A lot to talk about, a lot of storylines here at AWS reInvent 2020 at the Accenture Executive Summit. I'm John Furrier. Thanks for watching. <laughs>